You are now live on air. Hello, folks. We are live once again. I am back. Feeling pretty good, actually. I think I got rid of the rest of that cold, finally, after weeks of fighting with it. But you are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound. I am your host, Josh Kimmel, a.k.a. Treasure Seeker. And let's see. A little bit of catching up. Last week, great, just excellent conversation towards the end of the show we had uh, Chris Engel in there he's 50 years in the hobby we had Denny Morrison in there ring finder he's uh, 30 years in the hobby we had myself in there we had uh, Kenny Moore dirt band at 33 great conversation about relic hunting got a number of comments about it after the show actually which was good we had a number of uh channel ratings for it a number of likes quite a few people listened in after the fact they weren't able to catch the show live or whatever but they know as with all the shows you can always catch the archive at any time when it's convenient for you. You can always catch the video archive over on my YouTube channel of Ohio Metal Detecting operated by String Frenzy. I uh, just actually released a video on there about the Detector Pro Detecting Pal bungee harness. You know, if, if you've got uh, shoulder problems, back problems, or you just, you like running a larger coil, might be something to look into. I uh, in the video clip I was running the 17-inch coil on the Mine Lab CTX 3030. Big coil with the detector harness. It's relatively weightless. So that was uh, a little bit of an interesting clip to put up. Also, <coughs> keep in mind the Jolie fundraiser that Chicago Ron is doing there is still time to get involved the drawing will be held December 19th I believe 7 p.m. Central Time and as long as everything goes well it will be done through a live internet feed I believe Ron's going to try to do that through Ustream and I'm sure that the closer we get to that there will be links posted to that so that people can join in and watch and you know who knows Ron may even uh, be posting a list of winners somewhere but regardless I'm sure that we will stay updated on it the post is still a pin post on the beyond sight and sound facebook group and will remain there to the end we are just especially grateful to see the amount of outpouring and support that we've had where the uh the metal detecting community can come together as a whole for a common cause like this and it is for a good cause I mean, this is, it's Ron's niece, she's a six-year-old girl, and this sort of stuff is rough regardless. But to see it with such a young child, it's just, it doesn't make it any easier, that's for sure. So it is good to see the amount of support, and we do appreciate everyone that has either donated uh in terms of money merchandise purchase tickets or even help you know spreading the word around too because that's also a big thing my guest tonight is mr chris brooks he's had a few years in the hobby metal detecting enthusiast used many different machines mine lab ctx 3030 e-track some of the garrett line and others and is also uh doing a facebook group called metal detecting for beginners which we'll get into which uh i think it was a very good idea to provide a area where newcomers to the hobby can come and ask any sort of questions without feeling like uh 
sounding stupid or anything like that because no question is a dumb one actually uh enjoys helping people in the hobby he's a busy man between the group college classes and uh working as a international and domestic sales representative for Kelico metal detectors uh so i'm sure that does keep him very busy but he's had the opportunity taken the time to sit down and speak with us tonight so we're going to try to get this through here so we'll bring him in now chris how's it going hey pretty good thank you for having me not a problem. Thanks for uh, taking the time to sit down with us. So why don't we start off with, uh, first off, like I said, thanks for sitting down and taking the time to talk with us tonight about your experiences in the hobby, uh, the idea of what started this group, Metal Detecting for Beginners, on Facebook, which is a relatively new group to the scene, but seems like it's been picking up members at a dramatic rate. Uh, so why don't we start off with uh maybe explaining to us uh who is chris brooks uh how did you get involved with the hobby did you just wake up one day and say hey i think i'll try this or maybe there was an outside influence yeah absolutely um you know it's, it's not something i talk about a whole lot but um you know i don't mind here and there uh basically i was just going through a pretty rough time in my life um you know i just lost my job um you know things were not really going that well for me and uh you know a buddy of mine was like hey man there's this place in winter springs florida you know why, why don't you stop by it's really cool i know you like history and antiques and stuff uh, they got a you know showroom they got a museum i just uh, you know like why don't you check it out you know just get some fresh air and you know, try to get yourself together, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. So, of course, this place is Teleco, and, uh, you know, I get here, and I'm looking at all this cool treasure, you know, from, uh, you know, all the sunken, uh, you know, ships uh, from, you know, how many decades ago and whatnot, and, of course, they had the metal detectors all over the walls, and so I was like, okay, well, this seems kind of cool, and uh, got to talking to uh, one of the sales reps and uh, realized, okay, this, this could be kind of fun, so... Yeah, I ended up with my first Fisher F4 and uh, got into it and really started having some fun with it. And, uh, you know, literally uh, since then, I've, I've had dirt under my fingernails. So, um, you know, it's been, it was great for me. Great, you know, got me outside, got me, uh, you know, focused. And, uh, you know, once you put those headphones on, it's like a whole different world. You know, the whole, everything going on in your life just stops. And all you're doing is focusing on that coil and the sounds you hear from the detector. You know, oh, and, exactly. and at that time, that's, that's exactly what I needed. Exactly. Because uh, for many of us in the hobby, detecting all almost has a uh, a therapeutic nature to it where once you put those headphones on it's like zen everything else fades to the background and just melts away it's just you and the coil and and the history that you recover which is really it truly is an adventure oh, absolutely i mean you know and that, that's the fun of it you know i joke around uh, about metal detecting and i say that it's uh, for gamblers who don't like to gamble you know, it's, it's a, one of those things where, you know, you, you know you're going to find something, you know, but you don't know what you're going to find. And that's the fun of it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually going through the comments here, and uh, Mike uh, asked if I had any good finds. And I've got a really kind of a fun story about uh, my, my first silver. And, uh, you know, it was a couple years ago. I just started. Um, you know, I'm still learning how to use the machine. And I'm in downtown Orlando with a few of my buddies, and we're, uh, we're you know, just hanging out, having a good time. And I'm noticing down the street they're tearing the bricks up on some of the old side streets. And I'm like, hmm, I'm like, that's kind of interesting. I'm like, I'm thinking maybe there could be some stuff under there. So I know those bricks have been there for a good while. And uh, so I went over and, uh, you know, I started talking to some of the guys who were, uh, you know, in the construction crew. And I was like, hey, you know, you care if I, uh, you know, do some metal detecting in the, in the street here where uh, the bricks have been removed. And they kind of looked at me like I was uh, insane. And, uh, right. And, <laughs> Yeah, and they're like, yeah, dude, go for it. You know, have a good time. It's the worst part of town, uh, you know, and the sun's going down, so I wouldn't recommend it, but you're more than welcome to. And uh, so I went out there and um, ended up finding an 1898 Barber Dime, 1924 Mercury Dime. I found about uh, 10, maybe 15 wheat pennies, uh, a gold brooch. I mean, it, nice. it was basically a time uh, Oh, absolutely. It was uh, basically a time capsule, you know. Um, back then, I mean, they just, you know, flattened everything out and laid the bricks. So to, uh, to find that kind of stuff, you know, within my first, you know, maybe two months of detecting was just really 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 uh really fun and got me to a point where i was i was pretty hooked after that point because uh you know you, you find your first silver in the first couple months and it's very motivating to keep going <laughs> oh yeah i imagine that kind of uh the bug gets you pretty good then and you're hooked oh uh, definitely so, well, and i've told people before that. it's 
it's nice to uh, be able to go to a museum and see these pieces of history and stuff like that but if you get into detecting and you're really in it you have a true passion for the hobby why go to the museum to see the finds when you can step through that porthole to where the past speaks oh, I, I absolutely I completely agree and uh, interestingly enough on that note too I uh, some of my favorite finds uh, have been uh, locally where I live here in Central Florida. I found um, a lead seal luggage uh, tag uh, for the uh, Atlantic Coastline Railroad, uh, which I recently donated to um, one of the local museums that we have here. As oh, well very as the Atlantic nice. Coastline. Oh, they yeah, absolutely. Uh, I didn't think they'd want it. It was relatively small. You know, it was kind of hard to, to make out the uh, writing on it, uh, but uh, it actually said uh, ACL on one side, and then it says Oviedo, Florida on the other. So to have that piece of history, um, you know, put into their museum with my name on it, <laughs> right. Mona Bay, you know, and that that's a really cool feeling. So, uh, you know, I've got a few things um, that I found and, and donated to them, and I know that they're pretty excited about it. So uh, at this point, you know, from this point forward, I'm kind of working with the uh, one of the local history groups and they're you know getting some permission hunts to work with and anything found that's related to uh, you know the city history we're actually going to go ahead and put in the museum as well so I'm uh, really looking forward to that a lot of good things coming down the pipe oh very cool I mean it's always nice to be able to uh, be a part of something like that where you're you're actually preserving the local history for a museum or a historical society like that I know the uh, Oh, the Stealth Diggers out in uh, New Hampshire, they they do a lot with their local historical society like that. And it's good to do. It helps promote the hobby. And the best part is it also helps keep the hobby in a good light, which is really ultimately, for those of us who are involved with the hobby, that's the ultimate goal is to just do everything in the best way that we can to keep that hobby in a good light you know cut your plugs the proper way take the trash close gates respect the property respect the property owners absolutely and that's one of the things that we talk about in uh, metal typing for beginners on facebook um you know i had uh, joined a few different groups and you know kind of seen uh you know some of the some of the habits or some of the ways that people were communicating and it just wasn't all that positive for people who had real basic questions you know what is ground balancing what's the difference between a concentric coil and a double d coil um you know where, where can i hunt where you know what are what, are, what is a permission you know how do you go about it? And a lot of the responses I'd see on these forums or on these Facebook groups were, you know, usually kind of sarcastic or, you know, not just overall not very friendly and it really was disconcerting to me I was like I don't want metal detecting to be seen in that kind of light and right. of course there are positive people and you know there would be positive comments you know made back but um, I was uh, it just kind of brought it to my attention I was like damn there really needs to be a place where people who want to get into this hobby can go to communicate with each other share stories share finds ask questions and and feel comfortable asking questions and get you know solid answers and get um you know, answers that are, are going to be, you know, really beneficial to them and also create a, a community. So about, gosh, it may have been, uh, I think it was about three, maybe four months ago most, I uh, made the decision to go ahead and start metal detecting for beginners, and it's just taken off. I think we're at, um, what, maybe 800 members, 844 members, actually, and we've got a ton of people in it. Uh, we've got people who are absolutely fresh brand new to the hobby we have people who don't even have detectors yet but want to get into it we also have people who have been detecting for over 50 years you know 40 50 years in there who can offer really stellar advice and um, are more than happy and willing to share their experiences and share that wisdom that they've gained over you know decades of doing this uh, with people who you know really don't know that much about it and I know when I started off um, you know Kelly Co really helped me out they gave me a lot of good pointers they introduced me to some local you know detecting groups and you know that kind of got me started into it and, made, and I made some good contacts and I made some really good friends out that way too so um, you know for me personally I, I see metal detecting not only as a hobby but as a community and um, one in which we need to help each other out and you know similar with uh, you know the Chicago Ron situation um, you know, I think that's great when you when you see that many people come together um, and donate and, and um, you know for such a good cause. So you know, like I said, we're a community and uh, metal detecting for beginners. Uh, you know, it's, it's family friendly. It's just a place where you can go and share your finds, ask any question you need to. A lot of good links there as well, and um, just more information and more valid information than I think you should probably find in um, just about any Facebook group out there, really. 
Right, yeah, it, tries that, you know, course, it, like it tries to keep it all concise. It tries to keep it all concise and when in uh, one area, which is good. Definitely, mm -hmm. it it gives them an area where they can learn, even get ideas for research on machines that they may be interested in buying, or even how to hunt, what type of hunting they may want to do. Someone can shed some insight into how they can be better at that. Absolutely, and you know, one of my favorite things that uh, I like to do is share tips and tricks, and it's in Interesting. You know, if you if you're a fisherman and you catch some really nice fish, uh, you know, here in Florida, typically, you know, you want to catch that that 10 pound bass or whatnot, right. and you do that, you're, you'll tell your buddies who caught it. You'll tell them what lure you used or what kind of bait. You'll tell them your tackle and all that, but you're not going to tell them where it was, <laughs> you know. And metal detecting is the same way. And I, you know, one thing I like doing is informing people how to find those spots, how to do research. And in my opinion, you know, if you're not doing as much research on on a, a hunt um, as you are spending time hunting that location, you may want to reconsider, you know, how you're going about it. You know, you want to really do the, you know, the background on it. Uh, find out what was there. And and, uh, you know, find as much history uh, as you possibly can about it and then dive into it so you know exactly what you're doing and you get those really good relics and those really good coins. Absolutely, because it is no big secret to those of us who have been in the hobby for a while that perseverance and persistence does pay off. You've got to Absolutely. be willing to do your research. I mean, granted... Metal detectors do what they're intended to. They do find metal, and you can go anywhere and find things, but your finds could be even better or or just those really eye-popping finds if you've really done the research and put the time into it. And normally when you have that time put into the research really makes it all worthwhile once you get out to the field and you recover that first good target that you thought had to be there. Suddenly it just all comes together where you're like, yes, I was right. Oh, absolutely. You know, and uh, recently there was a, a place uh, not too far from, uh, you know, where I live here in Central Florida, and I just, I just had a gut feeling. I was like, you know, there's a bunch of turpentine mills back there. There's a bunch of sawmills. You know, there's a huge, uh, not huge, but a very long river, you know, that, that flows through that area. I was like, I know they were using it for, for the, you know, for logging. So I did some, uh, some research and uh, looked at some aerial photos from, you know, the 1940s and such, and kind of figured, okay, this is going to be a hot spot. And we ended up going out there, getting, you know, got permission from the landowners. And we were there for probably five hours and still was, you know, was finding stuff. And so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, let's take our time with this one. We're going to do, you know, we're going to do a hunt and then we're going to come back next week and we're going to go back the, the week after. And we, uh, we pulled some interesting artifacts out of there. Uh, my favorite was a uh, blacksmith chain. You know, all the links were different sizes. Uh, there was no weld marks or anything like that, so that was a, that was a really neat little find, which I also donated to the local museum. Uh, that would be again, a cool you know, find. Oh, absolutely. I definitely didn't think I'd pick something like that up, so that's that's going to be in the museum as well, since it has a lot to do with the local history with the turpentine and sawmills. And I guarantee you, I never would have found that, and I never would have found that location without doing the research. And that's really what it comes down to. And, uh, you know, anyone, you know, who's a beginner, and we stress this a lot in the beginner group, is, you know, do your research. Um, you know, check with local parks and recreation as well. Make sure that, you know, where you're detecting it is legal to do so. See if you need to get a permit. Uh, these are things that, you know, a lot of people who are new to the hobby may not be considering. They just see people going out and detecting or going out uh, to a park and, you know, it's not a big deal. And it really is. Um, you know, and uh, what most people find is that, it, you know, ignorance is no excuse because if you're going to get into the hobby, you, you really need to know what you're doing. And uh, interestingly enough, the county where I live, you have to have a permit to detect in any county parks, but just 20 miles north in the next county, you don't have to have a permit, and 50 miles north of that in the next county, there's no detecting in local parks at all. So, wow. you know, just another thing that a lot of people don't think about. So, again, you know, for the beginners, these are things we like to stress, uh, you know, and just not not just how to detect, but, you know, how to do it properly and, and how to get the best uh, experience out of it without, you know, possibly being arrested and <laughs> having your detector taken away as evidence. <laughs> right, because unfortunately, it only takes one to make it bad for all of us. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we again, you know, with the beginner group, it's uh, it's all about you know, barrier holes. You know, make your plugs as small as possible. You know, um, understand why pinpointers are so important so that you can keep your plugs small. Um, you know, it, it the area needs to look just as good, if not better, than it was before you got there. 
And uh, that's such a big part of detecting. We And it's important to us that we spread that so that we can continue to find this history and we can continue to preserve it. And, you know, if anything, just enjoy the hobby and, and keep our finds. And, um, you know, I've got a few things on my mantle that I don't think I could ever give away. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the Atlantic Coastline, uh, you know, luggage tag, I actually kept for about three years in my personal collection. And then when I found out the museum was looking for, uh, you know, railroad artifacts, I was like, okay, all right, it's about time. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> it's, you know, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, let other people see it for a while, I guess. So, right. you know, that worked out pretty well. Now, that is an interesting aspect you brought up, though. You said when you found out the museum was looking for railroad artifacts, you donated this to the museum, but how did that come to your attention? Did they put something in the paper, or maybe you knew a friend that had heard, or how did that come about? It was actually through my local metal detecting group, uh, Central Florida Metal Detecting. Um, you okay. know, they... Uh, yeah, they had uh, talked about it a little bit, and I had heard that the historical society was looking for, some, you know, for some stuff. And so I was like, okay, well, I was like, I didn't know that, but I'd be more than happy to loan them, you know, the stuff I found because it's just sitting there on my mantle. So, um, you know, gave them the option, and they were a lot more excited about it than I thought they would be. So, you know, if anything, <laughs> I might just, I might just let them keep it because I'd rather people see it and enjoy it. I've already had my time with it, so yeah, not, not a huge deal there. Right. Uh, we've got a call. Go ahead, caller. Hello, Mr. Josh. This is Kevin Strahan. Ah, Kevin Strahan. How's it going, Kevin? It's going all right. I want to ask the most important question that, that everybody wants to ask, but they're apparently not going to call in and ask. Uh-oh. What is, what is a day at Kelly Co? What is what? Kelly what at Kelly Co? What do you, what are you doing in, in, in one day? I mean, what, what, what do you, what does your job consist of? I mean, is it hectic all day? Do you get time to kind of goof off or just what, what does one day consist of working there? That's a good question. I imagine this time of the year it's kind of hectic. Yeah, it's <laughs> a, day, a day in the life of someone who works at Kelly Co. That's a good question. I like that one. Um, it basically starts with logging in. Uh, you're going to check your emails. You're going to check your social networking. You're going to see if there's anything you need to catch up on. Uh, you know, being that we do a lot of social networking, you know, I'll get messages that come in at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night asking about, you know, a specific metal detector. And, you know, there's times where, you, you know, you really want to, to be there and assist. And then there's other times where you, you just want to sit there and, <laughs> and enjoy a drink at home and, and kind of have your personal time. So I would say, um, you know, the biggest thing here is uh, we do a lot of uh, field tasks. So I get to work with, you know, all the machines that we have here. I get to take them out, um, kind of get a good feel for them, uh, you know, specific ones that, you know, are very new. You know, I want to get my hands on. I want to put them uh, through, um, for lack of better phrasing, you know, I want to put them through a hard time. I want to see what the limits on them so you know especially uh, a newer one that we have now is the uh, Nocto Forest Core you know I, I've beaten that thing up pretty good and that's that's a phenomenal detector um, aside from that it's mostly incoming calls uh, we also you know so we take a lot of calls uh, and we, we do a lot of networking as well uh, we do work the showroom as well as the museum answer any questions people might have um, for the most part, it's um, it's a great job. You know, it's uh, about ninety percent um, working in the sales aspect as well as customer service, and then you get um, you know that ten percent of the field test. But most of the field testing I do in my spare time because then I can just go out and actually have a good time with it and, uh, and actually go to the places I want to go and hunt with. So um, honestly, it's pretty straightforward. It sounds like you really uh, kind of hit the ground running every morning. Oh yeah, there's there's really no stopping here. Uh, you, you get to work, and you know it, it's fun, um, but it is work, you know, and uh, and you got to remember that, you know. And uh, the nice thing about it, I would have to say, is that it, it, Calico is a family-owned company. Um, if I need to talk to my boss, he's literally, you know, in the same you know, room as me. If I need to talk to the vice president of the company, he's two doors down and his door is never closed. So um, it's one of those things where it's a great company. I worked for a, a very large telecommunication companies, uh, and I won't say the name, but it starts with an A and ends with a T for, <laughs> for about six years. And it, it just it just wasn't fun. It was stressful. It was, uh, you know, the, it was a sales environment, but it was very pushy with sales. And that was one thing I really didn't enjoy. And um, it got to a point where I was like, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to sell something to someone when they don't need it or it's not the right product for them. And that's really why I like Kelly Co. And that's why I started the beginner group because I want to see people get what they need and uh, get the the proper equipment. So we uh, we really stress that. We spend a lot of time with that. We ask a lot of questions and we we try to connect people with the right equipment. So that's that's most of our day actually is just conversing with our customers, getting to know them, getting to understand their needs and then meeting those needs on a, on a personal level. 
which I imagine can be a real chore in its own sometimes because you probably get quite a few calls where people may not necessarily even know what they want, just that they're interested in getting involved with the hobby. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, we, we're all trained here to, you know, ask those specific questions, find out what those needs are, and then meet those needs with the proper equipment. You know, uh, if somebody lives in an area with, you know, incredibly high mineralization, you know, they need a machine with ground balance. You know, and that's something we're going to stress to them. So, you know, that, I mean, and that's just one example, but, you know, obviously if somebody wants to purchase something, you know, we're, we're going to be able to help them out with it, but, you know, the most important factor for me and, and all, what I would say all my coworkers is that we find, you know, the right product for the right customer and we assist them from beginning all the way to the end. And what I love seeing, um, more than anything else is, uh, when they send me an email back with their finds and, you know, it'll be some awesome relic or some awesome coin and they're just so excited and it feels really good to be a part of that and have, be that person who helped them get into it and gave them the advice and made the suggestions and then they you know became successful in it and uh, so it's very rewarding as well so definitely the best job I've ever had that's for sure yeah I'm sure right. I could get into right. a job right, like Josh, that I'm gonna go ahead and go so I can uh, let other people call in great show and uh, I'll be listening all right thanks for the call Kevin thanks thanks Kevin Wow, yeah, I could, uh, you know, I, I have a passion for the hobby. I really enjoy the hobby and helping others, so I could get into a sort of job like that, I'm sure. And that's nice, too, that it is kind of a family, well, it is a family-owned company, and it seems like it's a very uh, close-knit company where, you know, everybody is able to go and and talk to one another with their issues or you know hey we've got uh, this customer asking this question I'm not real sure what do you think or something like that oh, absolutely and you know that the thing is we're good at what we're, we do we go through a lot of training but there's always more to learn and uh, one of the great things about working here also is that we're confined to one building uh, we've got you know gosh you know I think a lot of people uh, expect this to be this huge company, but really I think we have maybe 40 employees, and I think I'm being liberal on that. It's probably a, quite a bit less than that, maybe 30 actually. But I mean, if there's something that I need, I, li I can go to the warehouse and I can check that product out and make sure that it's the right coil for the, you know, for the right machine because maybe that machine is 10 years old, you know, and we're not as uh, familiar with it as uh, maybe some other people. You know, I've been detecting for three years, so there's a lot of machines to catch up on. So I can go to our mine lab repair center, which is, you know, 20 yards away, and go in there and ask my experts, say, hey, what's going on with this? You know, how can I fix this? Or this customer has this issue and get it resolved because we've got people who've been doing this, you know, since basically since metal detecting began. So, you know, having that literally at my fingertips uh, makes my job much easier and I think it makes it a lot better for our customers too because we're able to provide them with, you know, the, the correct information to make sure we get, again, the products that they need. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It would be very handy to have those resources like that just at the fingertips, like you said, where if you don't have that answer, you can go, you know what, hold on, I'll get right back to you. Pretty much, yeah. And, uh, you know, it takes me a whole 30 seconds to, to, you know, to walk uh, outside to the repair center, walk over to, you know, to the warehouse, because, again, we're all, we're all in one building. So it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward here. There's, you know, we, we do our job, we do it well. Uh, we love what we do, and um, you know, bottom line is that uh, we get to play with the machines too. So <laughs> but that's uh, that's the biggest perk I would say is that we uh, literally uh, Saturday night rolls around, and I'm clocking out, and I go, "What? Uh, which one am I going to take off the wall today?" <laughs> and snag the, you know, snag my uh, machine for the day, go out detecting on Sunday, and bring it back Monday. And uh, that's that's pretty much that on in terms of my uh, my field testing. So definitely get to enjoy that aspect of it. Oh, absolutely. That would make it handy because it gives you the ability to try these different machines, not only for your own experience, but for the experience of, say, a customer who may be interested in it. We've got another caller. Go ahead, caller. Okay. Who do we have? This is Jim uh, from Orlando. Oh, hello, Jim. Hi. Say, I wanted to ask Chris a question, and I've been wanting, we've hunted together many times, and I wanted to ask him a question that I never have asked him. Um, mm -hmm. Chris, have you ever run into any exciting wildlife out there in the boonies? Um, that's a good question. I, I used to do a lot of nature photography, 
Um, so yeah. running into, you know, crazy animals is not that uncommon. But honestly, I, you know, I've never seen anything too crazy. No, you know, no bears, um, maybe some cotton mouse every now and then. But, yeah, that's pretty common living in Florida. <laughs> um, you know, gators, aside from that, not, not really a whole lot. Hmm. That's probably nothing but a good thing. I was just going to say that we have noticed that some people out there with their metal detectors get so entranced with detecting and digging they don't notice that uh, that rattler about four inches away from them staring at them like a couple of our compatriots did a couple of weeks ago. You know, that's a good point. You do have to remain aware of your surroundings, especially when you're out there where you could have poisonous snakes and the such come up on you. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that's why I love the headphones that have the adjustable volumes. And there's even a set that uh, is just one-sided so that you can be more aware of your surroundings. And it's definitely important to do so. I've been lucky enough to uh, not run into anything too crazy, but I definitely hear stories. So anytime you're out in the woods, um, you know, far from <laughs> civilization, even well, if you're in Florida, uh, even close to civilization, you definitely want to be careful about uh, wildlife and what you run into out there. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's, that's really all I wanted to say. It's a great show, and uh, thanks for being there, Chris, and we'll see you later. Thanks again. Oh, well, thanks for thanks the call. Show. Well, sounds like uh, we've got a few uh, Florida listeners in there hearing you. I may have, I may have told a few people I was going to be on the show tonight. <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the more the Definitely merrier. Want to spread the word. But, uh, yeah, Jim, that that was an interesting question that Jim had. And I suppose with you having a past with uh, nature photography, you get some pretty good photos of your finds as well. Oh, absolutely. Um yeah, definitely had uh, had an interest in photography and kind of bounced around from uh, hobby to hobby for quite a while. And then once I found detecting, that was... That's pretty much it. I've been sticking with that one <laughs> ever since, so I don't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, I, I never even expected to have a job like this here at Kelly Code too, so that's, uh, that was, that was pretty cool for that to go through. And, uh, you know, expect a lot of good things from this company in the future. We've got uh, some big plans in, uh, I believe January actually. We're even gonna start, or, uh, we're, you know, talking about starting a, um, kind of a donation program where, you know, we know that as a detector, you know, detectors, you're going to find pull tabs all Absolutely. The time. They are the detectorist's I'm, bane. Exactly. And, you know, if you are one that doesn't discriminate with your detector, you know you're going to find them. And so what we want to do is we want you to send them to us. We, we're going to collect them, and uh, we're actually going to donate them all to the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, since they actually do that for uh, kind of a fundraising thing. So that's just one thing that's going to be happening with us in the near future, and we've got a lot of big things planned as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I don't want to make this one big Kelly Co. plug. <laughs> I want to, you know, but I, I do, you know, want to throw a few things out there, obviously. So, but I'm um, look, very looking, looking forward to that as well. And, uh, you know, just some, some very big things are going to be happening in the, uh, in the world of metal detecting. That's a very cool concept, too, with the pull tabs. Maybe they'll even put a little thing there with it showing, like, uh, how many have been donated by the detecting community or something, just to kind of keep people up to date if they're curious about that sort of thing. Because it would be interesting and, to see the progress. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. And, um, you know, we, we have the idea, and we have, uh, you know, sort of floating around how we want to do it. Uh, and in terms of the specifics, we're kind of still working on, but that's definitely a good idea. And I'll, uh, I'm going to make sure I bring that up to, uh, you know, to the the bigger uh, bosses here. I call, uh, you know, my my main uh, boss uh, the captain, and everyone else are the generals. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be listening in uh, right now, if not tomorrow. So. Uh oh. Well, hopefully we're uh, doing everything okay, and they're enjoying what they're hearing if they're listening. And I I'm guess sure they if are. they are listening, apologies for the glitch, because this is not normal. This is a little out of the ordinary for us tonight. Well, technology's great only when it works, but, uh, you know, it does happen. <clears throat> no worries there. But uh, speaking of if they're listening or not, if they are listening, I would like to extend my personal thanks and gratitude as well has on the behalf of Chicago Ron, I had spoke to him the other day, and he had mentioned to let Kelly Co. know as well, if he didn't get the chance to himself personally. I believe he sent a message to Kelly Co. 
but he greatly, greatly appreciates the donation that Kelly Co. made uh, on the behalf of the fundraiser for Joel Lee. That, that was very, very commendable, and it is very much appreciated by him as well as his family. Absolutely, and um, you know, being that this is a family-run organization and everyone's really tight knit here, we we look at the metal detecting community also as a, an extension of the family, and you know, anything we can do to help. And I know that uh, as soon as we found out about that and we looked into, you know, it uh, went up the chain of command. They're like, absolutely, we're gonna, we're going to help with this cause, and uh, it, it's really nice knowing that we were able to uh, to be a part of that and, and support that, um, you know, that 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 mission that they're trying to accomplish. So, really cool aspect of it, and. Again, just one of the things that we do here in terms of community service and really helping out. Right. And it's it's good to uh, give that recognition where recognitions do. And I just wanted to let the nice folks at Kelly Co. know that it did not go unnoticed. It was very much appreciated. Oh, good. Um, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. But... Uh, Back to the uh, detecting and your experiences, uh, had you really found much of anything interesting before your barber dime, or is that really kind of what nipped it for you and you were hooked? Well, that, yeah, well that's definitely what got me hooked, um, just that experience. I mean, seeing that, you know, within probably, you know, an area of, you know, 30, 40 feet by, you know, 40 or 50 feet, there was that much history available in uh in such close proximity to where I live, uh, you know, it, it, that's really what got me going. And it's funny that, you know, I'll, I'll be working with uh, callers, uh, you know, at work, and somebody might live in New Hampshire, and they want to get a, a machine, and, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is my second or third one, and they're telling me about all the cool stuff they find, you know, from, you know, Revolutionary War, and we got people in South Carolina, you know, in Georgia, and, you know, so forth, so finding, civ, you know, Civil War stuff, and I'm like, Central Florida, we don't have that much. So yeah, I imagine that can be kind of a double-edged sword of the job, where it could make a person a little envious at times. That I mean, happy that they made the finds, but a little envious oh, too, where it's like, oh, I wish I could be there and find those items too. Absolutely, and as soon as I get a chance, I definitely plan on doing some uh, traveling and uh, make some connections and, and see who I can kind of, you know, whose couch I can sleep on for a day or two and try to get some good detecting in across the country and uh, maybe do like a video blog with it. I think that'd be a lot of fun if, uh, you know, we could do something like that. I just got to get, uh, you know, Kelly Co. to sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Kidding. I know. Uh, <laughs> When when I got the opportunity to attend Detective Palooza back in August, that was just it was a blast to meet other like minded individuals in the hobby. We there were a number of us that took video and uploaded that so that others could kind of come along too in a sense. And uh just I mean, it was nice seeing people make different finds and stuff like that, but I think the real uh thrill of it or the real enjoyment was the fact of being able to meet these other people put names to faces so to speak and just enjoy the general camaraderie of the hobby oh, absolutely i mean i consider it almost like a brotherhood you know with um the you know the guys and and, and girls that i detect with we uh you know, if we get a good permission hunt, you know, that phone, those phone calls start getting made. And it's like, okay, guys, you know, we, we got this. Let's, let's head out. And, um, you know, you, you make such good uh, connections with people. And it's just one of those things that I never expected to turn out that way. Um, I figured, you know, detecting would be me on the beach by myself, uh, kind of, you know, finding gold rings or, you know, jewelry coins and whatnot. And it turned into to so much more than that. It turned into more of a lifestyle. And it uh, it's a lifestyle that I really, a lifestyle that I absolutely enjoy doing. So, you know, if I can uh, spread the word about that and get more people involved and see how great it is and uh, all the benefits of it, you know, I'm, that's, you know, kind of a, a life mission now for me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is a lifestyle, like you said. And uh, the thing that just amazes me is that they, the hunters come from every walk of life. It just, it amazes you. And they continue to come in from all of these walks of life, and the playing field is leveled, whether they're a lawyer, a doctor, a mechanic, Hello. or what. Uh, we've Hello. got a caller. Go ahead, caller. Hi, Josh. Oh, Mr. Denny Morrison. You got it. Hi, Chris. 
Hey, how's it going? Hey, I wanted to call in and uh, tell you that I metal detect at, uh, in Virginia uh, mm -hmm. with the DIV group, and I want to thank Calico for all the water that they furnish us for every hunt that I've ever been to. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Oh, oh that's nice. Welcome. I didn't and realize they did that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely uh, support uh, metal detecting groups and clubs all over the country. Um, you know, we again, you know, we want to spread the word. We want more people to get into it. And anything we, we can do to help, we're going to do. So uh, supporting those local clubs and, uh, you know, giving them the information and, and the supplies that they need to do that, um, you know, for us, it's it's not only, um, it's, I mean, it, it's a pleasure really um, on our end to uh, to support you guys and, and see what kind of finds you get. So absolutely, we're definitely, definitely more than happy to assist and uh, appreciate that too. We've uh, got another caller I'm going to work in here with us, Denny and Chris. Uh, okay. Let's see here, 0803, you're on with us as well. How you doing? This is Josh? Yes. Hey, Josh, my name is Gene Knight. I'm the Director of International and Domestic Sales for Teleco Metal Detectors. How are you? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, doing <laughs> oh just fine, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gene. Um, hey, Chris. Listen, I just wanted to call in, and I, I wanted to, um, to just say that, that we really appreciate you and, and your show, and we appreciate... Uh, you know, everybody in the community and, and we're real happy to be able to serve the community best that we can. And, um, you know, we're, we're just, we're just excited that, you know, about the hobby and where it's going and, uh, you know, guys like you that are, are continuing to, to help, um, you know, expand the hobby and, and teach people and to talk about it and, and, uh, you know, inform people about what's going on. So we really appreciate you, Josh. Definitely. Oh, well, I appreciate that. And I just, uh, you know, I, I do what I can. I enjoy speaking with other hunters, such as uh, Denny and Chris and, and a number of the other listeners and stuff. And, uh, you know, every uh, now and then we get lucky and we're able to bring some good information or entertainment to the folks. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, you're doing a great job. And I just wanted to, uh, to uh, just call in and uh, let you know that, that management is listening and that, uh, you know, I've been listening to the show. Uh, in between being here with my wife and taking care of my kids and everything, and um, but uh, you know, I wanted to call and let you know that we are listening. We do listen to what people say. We are listening to um, uh, you know feedback from our customers and from people in the in the second community, and uh, we're really excited about the future of where Kelico's going. And you know, I'm uh, I'm excited because I got guys like Chris on my team, and um, awesome. You know, we want to continue to support you guys and and do what we can to help uh, help out the hobby and everything that we're doing so excellent well we appreciate the call and hopefully you're enjoying the show <laughs> i am i am i am so, listen, you keep up keep up the good work and chris i'll see you bright and early tomorrow buddy it yeah, sounds good gene i'll be here <laughs> all right <laughs> thanks okay. gene okay hey, chris, did you happen to see the post i put on uh probably your page on your on the web on the facebook Probably didn't get to look at it yet tonight. I oh, went yeah. back on the and, metal detecting for beginners page. Yeah, I went back in my in uh, Calico's archives, <laughs> and on page eighty one or eighty two uh, was a picture of my partner and I when we stopped down at Calico many years ago. And uh, Calico used to have us on the Mind Lab Explore. Uh, Mind Lab, uh, what was it? It wasn't Explore. Uh, no. The water machine. Excalibur? Excalibur. And mm. my partner and I and about six others here in Ohio found about three or four thousand rings in one lake. Good grief, <laughs> <Wow>. Denny. <Yeah. laughs> it, it, it's on that page. My buddy found a five thousand dollar bracelet and Holy he found, cow. Actually he found a ten thousand dollar ring down at Saint Mary's Lake, John. Right, yeah, I remember <laughs> that story. Yep. Wow. Yeah. How's your how's your retirement going now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to call in and thank you again for from all the DIV hunters. But uh, I tell you, I've been out there when uh, I called my buddy a couple of years ago. It was so hot down in Virginia that it was like in March or something, and I couldn't believe it, it was ungodly hot. 
And I told my buddy, I said, I was over by a tree, and I said, you're not going to believe that, this, there's a shower over here. And he said, what? I said, yeah, I took about four bottles and just dumped them on myself. It was just so hot. <laughs> so I filled up all my pockets with your water, and then I went out into the field and passed it out to everybody that needed a, a bottle of water. So uh, Awesome. And I'm glad we were able to. He always tells us, uh, and I don't know, I suppose you talked to Doc, to Doc. Doc always tells us when we go out, if we're thirsty when we're in the field, it's too late. That you got to keep your body hydrated, and uh, Calico furnishes the water, so drink it. Right. You and, certainly uh, don't want to get it, let it get to that point where you're starting to dehydrate. Right. And it can happen really fast when you're hunting like that. You're out for the like 12 hours hunting, and you just don't realize how dry you're getting. And, oh, absolutely, uh, because so many of us, once we get out there hunting, we just, we lose track of time. Right. First thing mm -hmm. I put in my pouch when I go is always a bottle of water and uh, something to keep my, actually, when I go there, I have a thing just for bullets and one for buttons. But the first thing in my pouch is a bottle of water, and then if I've got all my uh, camouflage pants, I put a bottle, if it's really hot, a bottle on each one of the legs on that thing, so... It's a little there bit extra weight, but well worth it when you're, you know, a mile from your truck and you can't get back. Right. So, we pray. I, you've had uh, sent a representative up there a couple times, right, Chris? I believe so. Uh, we've got um, quite a few, or a couple actually, who uh, travel all over the country and uh, make those connections and assist those groups. So, you uh, sent a lady up there the here. last time. You sent a lady up there last time, as I remember, from uh, Calico. Yeah. Interesting. I, you know, to be honest, I've been with Calico for about four months. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still getting to know some of the, uh, the people who really may have done certain things. <laughs> well, your yeah. your uh, uh, owner of Calico actually took my buddy and I into his office and pulls out this treasure chest. Honest to God, it was a treasure chest. And in that treasure chest was more doubloons I've ever seen in my whole life. Wow. He, he had actually metal detected. He wanted us to go metal detected with him out in the ocean. And I said, my partner and I said, we water detect, but we don't go any place that goes over our head. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but he, he was really a nice guy. And I never, and uh, if you look at the picture on Calico there and uh, on that page, we're both holding uh, a pistol apiece from uh, one of the treasure ships. From Spain, from Spain, pretty cool. Wow, that would be a nice picture. Still entrusted picture. with uh, whatever went down in the ocean. It's pretty cool. Well, I'll get Absolutely. off here. What's that, Chris? I say, and and it's awesome that you mentioned the uh, you know the pistols because they're probably the same ones that we have in our showroom. Uh, we just revamped the entire thing, and it looks amazing. Um, okay. It really does. I'm sitting here uh, in, in the showroom, actually on the phone. I'm looking around and just amazed at how much progress we've made and how much you know we're acquiring in terms of a uh, history and, and uh, you know not only that right. but the amount of vectors that we have on display for people to to uh, to uh, try out and uh, and get a good feel for. So yeah, I know you really got a neat neat office over there. I love it. Absolutely. My wife didn't love it, but I loved it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's funny. I brought my girlfriend uh, detecting once. And that's the end of that story. <laughs> I understand. My wife says, I don't want to get my fingernails dirty, but I'll wear anything you find. Yeah, yeah, some of them aren't real big on it, but there are a number of uh, lady diggers out there that do enjoy the hobby, too. Yep, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. She she actually enjoyed herself. I, I, I kid. Uh, I'm going to get it, really. I, yeah, I'm going to get it. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> but, but, yeah, she actually had a good time, and uh, we're actually going out a little bit more often now, and she's, she's getting the hang of it. So it's definitely a good couple's thing to do, too. Uh, you get, really get to, you know, uh, spend some time with your loved ones uh, if you, you know, get the whole family involved or a significant other. So definitely a good way to uh, make those connections with family, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Josh, you got time for a quick question for Chris? Yeah, sure. Chris, what do you think about the uh, uh, spinoffs on uh, Mind Lab metal detectors out of China? Uh, I'm not happy about it. Um, it's it, I'm trying to think of a nice way to put it. Um, it detracts from the real purpose of what we do. You know, um, there are amazing products that come from Mind Lab, they're an outstanding company. And yes, to they see, are. you know, and to see these these fakes, uh, you know, out on the market right now is, is pretty horrendous, really, because 
people want to get into this hobby. They want to get good quality machines, and you know, you're kind of you know getting bamboozled into something like that. It's just, it's horrible, really. So it's a, it's an embarrassment, um, you know, in terms of that happening. Obviously, we would never buy or sell anything like that. So it's not something that we have to worry about. But overall, it, it is uh, you know kind of a black eye to uh, to metal detecting in general. And now we're having the issue with the uh, Garrett Pro Pointers as well. There's some yep. counterfeits of those too, which. Uh, just kind of uh, serves as a reminder for us that are in the hobby that if we're going to purchase equipment, we need to do it from a reputable dealer or at That's least right. know Absolutely. where that product is coming from. You're right. I couldn't That's agree great. more. Chris. Me neither. That's great. Great uh, way to look at it. So I'll get off here, Chris. Great program, Josh. And. Uh, Hope to see you both out in the field. Hey, Josh, by the way, I put a question on your page and wanted to know what you found there by the lake when you were out showing that bungee cord for whatever, your 705 or something. You were oh, for the CTX. Yeah. Uh, actually, the weather was pretty bad that day. The, there was nothing to block the wind. It was yeah. uh, The wind was quite terrible, and I spent the afternoon digging... Uh, Eight and ten inch signals for Memorial and Wheat Pennies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an old park, but you know they hold every doggone uh, event in that area. So, uh, but uh, that is definitely an old area. So. Yes, it is. Yeah. Good eye, though, Denny, to know yeah, where I that knew was. Right away where you were standing. Yeah, <laughs> like I knew where Kenny more or Kenny was standing when. He was doing that video. I said, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Good eye. And yep. if you happen to find a picture of you and your buddy with those pistols, by all means, put it up on the group. I'd like to see that. I I kept I sent it from uh, Calico's page to Facebook, but I don't have any idea where it went. Maybe maybe went to Calico's Facebook page. Hmm. Very good possibility. If I find it, I'll put it over on your page. All right. Thanks for all the right. call, Denny. All right. Good night, Chris. And good night, Josh. Yep. Mike, and thank you. Uh, it looks like we've got one more caller here, uh, very enthusiastic about the hobby. It looks like we've got Mr. Chris Engel on with us. Hello, Josh. Great show tonight. I just wanted to call in and say, Chris, you're an awesome guest. It, uh, I've had been real good listening to it, and I've really enjoyed it. And oh, well, thank you very much. I really, I really appreciate that. Just wanted to call in and just say thanks for everything, and Josh, thank you for a fantastic show tonight. Well, thank you. Oh, we awesome. had a little bit of glitches out of the gate there, which is uncommon oh. for us, but uh, we rolled with it. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I sat through the glitches because I knew it was going to come back. That's right. I am determined. No one can say I'm not persistent. I will continue to try. <laughs> well, you do a Absolutely. Good it's, just like, it's just like finding pull tabs. You just got to keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Good. You're so right, Chris. <laughs> well, anyway, you guys thank you uh, much. have a great night. Okay, you too, you Chris. Too. Thank you. All right, take care. And we've right. got another caller, uh, 5894. You're on Beyond Sight and Sound with myself and Chris Brooks. Hi, Josh. I got a quick comment for you and a question for Chris. Okay. Uh, first of all, get your wetsuit ready because I don't care how cold it is, you can go get in the lake and try to find some $10,000 rings. <laughs> and for Chris, um, you said you do both beach hunting and dirt digging. Which do huh? you prefer? I prefer the dirt digging, to be honest with you. Dirt digging? Uh, yes, I like finding relics. Uh, I have uh, dabbled in uh, antique sales, or what I like to call mantique sales. I used to uh, buy and sell um, basically the stuff that you would like to see you know, in a, in a man cave. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of military stuff. So I've always had a passion for history. I've always had a passion for antiques, and to be able to find them in the ground instead of having to go somewhere and buy them has um, has really been a, a lot of fun for me. Beach combing, I, I do enjoy. I get out there with the X-Cal and a few other machines uh, you know, when I get the chance, but the uh, the biggest downside for me as a college student is uh, to cut costs and expenses. I don't have a car. I actually only have a motorcycle. So I break down the machines, throw them in my oversized backpack, and uh, and basically get to wherever I need to go. And uh, So getting to the beach can be a little, little bit of a trip, you know, trying to hide, you know, the motorcycle helmet somewhere and, and all that. So going local places, uh, you know, and, and looking for relics and coin shooting uh, works a little bit better for me. Awesome. Hmm. Well then. Well, thanks, thanks guys. 
Not a problem. Thank Thanks for the call. Uh-huh. Bye. <laughs> Folks, the uh, the lovely and talented Miss Tam, uh, part of the Beyond Sight and Sound crew here. She uh, gets a lot of the photos when I'm out hunting, as well as uh, Abby does a share of them herself, too. Uh, handy to have uh, on-hand photographers, so to speak, at times. It can be a big help when you make that nice find. <laughs> But uh, we are getting uh, pretty close to the end of our rope here. But uh, before you go, with uh, your passion for the hobby as well as the very nice concept of the new group, Metal Detecting for Beginners, where you're helping all these newcomers into the hobby and trying to instill the right way to do things, the proper methods of research, uh, you know, know your leg, your uh, regulations, do things properly. Where do you, as a hunter involved in the hobby, see this hobby going in the future? Well, I think that <clears throat> as technology advances uh, with metal detecting, I think we're going to see um, a lot more people getting involved because we're going to find machines that. Um, are more accurate, uh, have better depth. I think uh, we're going to find more areas that um, hopefully will be opened up uh, to excavation or to detecting so that we can take that history out of the ground and put it where it belongs, which is in a museum. Um, you know, overall, I think the future in metal detecting looks very good. Uh, we've got a hobby that has been around for quite a while now, and honestly, I don't see it going um, anywhere but, but up. Good answer. Good answer. Because I... Uh I certainly don't plan on stopping anytime soon myself, and it is a great hobby. It's it's just really wonderful for people to get involved with it, and when they do, they've just been handed a lifetime of experience and memories. Absolutely. And uh, the way it sounds, Kelly Co. will continue to be right there on the uh, front lines of it. You bet. Awesome. That's great. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us, Chris, uh, as well as the calls that we did get. Uh, you know, Jim from Florida called in, Denny Morrison called, Kevin Strahan. Uh, we, I think we had a couple callers in between there, which if the name, ex oh, uh, the director of sales for Kelly Co. We can't forget Gene. <laughs> that that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Got to remember Gene, and oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a big one. the lovely and talented Miss Tam. Uh, so there were a number of us. Hopefully, there were uh, quite a bit of interactions in the chat. And by all means, folks, if you enjoyed the show, please like, rate the channel, uh, leave me a comment, drop me a line, whatever you know. Let me know you liked it. Let me know if you'd like to be a guest or even if you know of someone who might make a good guest or have an interesting topic you'd like to see covered. Uh, we, we do try to accommodate and do what we can because after all here at Beyond Sight and Sound, it is radio for you, the listeners. And uh, we're just fortunate enough to be able to come along for the ride in a sense and it's something that we can all enjoy uh hang in there with me for a few minutes chris and we'll roll out of here but uh for those that uh have been listening we appreciate everyone for tuning in be sure and check out the facebook group metal detecting for beginners as well as Absolutely. the facebook group metal detecting beyond sight and sound and uh, drop in to Kelly Co. Check out their website. I'm sure you have the uh, the address for that, don't you, Chris? Oh, yeah. I believe it's kellycodetectors.com. Or you can just do a Google search, Kelly Co., and we'll pop it right up for you. There you go. Gene's going, all right, he's on his feet. He knows the link. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. folks. We appreciate everyone for tuning in. Be sure and check us out next week where... Who knows what's going to happen, but we'll be here to see. Until then, enjoy the show, enjoy the hobby, and get out there and try to find something 
We'll see you, folks.